Hey guys, so we've got another image sent in from Carl Vulgas here. So we've done probably six or eight tutorials on him before because his style's that good. If you guys want the settings for this edit as a DNG, there'll be a link down in the description that will take you over to Kyle's Instagram and there'll be a link either in his bio or in his moments and that will take you to a Dropbox where you can download the settings for this image and there is a passcode. So at a certain point throughout this video, code is gonna pop up up the top right and you're gonna use that code to get into the Dropbox link and download the settings for this tutorial. Shout out to his presets. He sells on his Instagram page go check those out guys me and him also collaborated inside my course where you can learn his in-depth workflow and how he goes about editing his images and his full Lightroom process his Photoshop process his export settings he goes through it all guys and you get the raw image to follow along so if you're interested in that and a bunch of other talented guest editors check out the course so he's given us a raw image and we're just going to try to recreate the edit that he has on his Instagram guys so let's get straight into it okay so just talking about the settings and maybe why he chose them so 20 millimeters nice and wide wants to capture the whole landscape if stop 6.3 so entire image in focus there that is what he's gone for and then a really fast shutter speed because it's nice and bright and a low iso because it's nice and bright no need for a high one okay so let's go about just matching up our edit to his i'll just show you guys the cropping so here we have we're just straight in the horizon there just like lining it up with the horizon there really easy for this image and yeah sort of brought down the cropping to get a bit more foreground and a bit less sky the foreground is probably a bit more interesting than the sky in this one enable profile corrections whack that let's do remove chromatic aberration as well let's come up so exposure let's just really brighten it his is obviously way brighter Okay, so I just want to show you guys the curve. So they're already done, but I'll just take you through what the curve is doing here. So we've got a nice S curve here and there's no fade to it in the whites especially. So if we go actually over to his image, so now we've got his image here right here and now histogram he's got no fade to the whites and highlights there. So just remember what that histogram looks like and we'll just go back to our one. Okay, so there's a bit of overexposing going on, but that's okay. We sort of like that big glow out to the left there. So how that helps us determine our curve here is we don't want to do anything like this or this is as you can see what it does to our histogram quite often people want to put fades to their whites and highlights so we don't want to do that because it's quite obvious you can see those whites blending in with the background if we do something like this with the curve whites blend in with the background even if i bring up the whites now here they're not going to blend in with the background so that's how you know to do that with the top half of the curve and then there's a strong fade to the darkest areas and it's a very sudden fade that he's got so it's not a nice roll off it looks nice but it's not like this where it's very slowly rolling off it's quite a sharp transition into a fade there and then as for the color channels we've just gone for a touch of a lift in the color channels not much going on here you'd probably get away achieving this edit without using the color channels at all but I like to use them just because it gives you the option of adding in colors like say halfway through my edit I want a bit more greens so and midtones you can do that with curves so let's carry on trying to achieve this edit so up here we can drop the highlights we want quite a bit more detail back there we want that glow so that's gonna Gonna give us that really bright kind of harsh light and then we're gonna drop the highlights uh, we want more shadows definitely bring this up okay so a bit too much contrast and i think that's because our black's really harsh and then let's put in a bit of a punch with some whites and then maybe pull back the shadows Okay, so moving down to the clarity. So he's got quite a nice texture to his image. He goes for quite a cinematic look. So the clarity will give you a really nice smooth texture to your image. Really like that. And then also the cinematic look is quite dull in the colors. So vibrant sort of dims those colors a bit. I think that helps with his his style the cinematic look uh, saturation can come down a bit we'll fine-tune that in HSL 
Okay, so coming down to split turning, what we want to do is add blues into the highlights. So he quite often does this if you look at his Instagram, blue and highlights, and we'll do quite a bit of that. And then a good amount of warmth into the shadows. Just go something like that. What the balance does is lets you target more of the shadows with your shadows or more highlights. So you can do more highlights or more shadows by using the slider here. What we'll do is just add in more warmth into the shadows here. Right, good. Roll with that. Okay, so we're on to HSL now, and this should be where we pretty much finish the edit. So I think like our saturations and stuff aren't too bad. We look too yellow in our stand, so let's go this direction. Yellow, let's make it a bit more orange. Greens, so pretty much only the dude's scarf is the only thing. Green. Uh, Right, not a lot of blues in this, just the sky really. I think we're looking pretty good there. Uh, saturation, just drop those blues. Green, so just looking at the guys, let's match those up. Yellows, matching them up. And we're about good. Might wanna play with the luminance of some of these could give a really nice shine if you bring up the oranges. Probably just roll, leaving it. I think we look about good there. Okay, so we're about done, but we just want to add the final touches. Now it's very hard to see the grain that he's added, but I reckon there's a tiny bit. If he's got ISO of 100, you shouldn't be able to see any grain at all. So I can see a tiny bit, it's, it's very hard to see. Uh, we'll go with 10, no vignette for this one. And then for sharpening, I think his image, um, I've got his JPEG over here. So once you export out of Lightroom, your image actually looks a little sharper, especially when you bring it back into Lightroom. So it's very hard to tell sharpening. If I wanted to match them up right now, I'd probably bring it up the sharpening to 70. But he shot at f6.3, so should be very sharp. But then he did bring down the clarity, so it's okay to bring up the sharpness quite a bit if you take down the clarity. You still get quite a nice smooth look. But yeah, I'm just going to leave it there, guys. I think we look about good. What I forgot to show you guys is I actually put a filter up the top right here. Just click on it here. It's just hiding behind there. Um, exposure. So if I just take it off so you guys can see what it is like before. I thought there was a there was an increase of exposure coming from the left there. So I just put in some warmth. So about 12 and then up the exposure. We get a little too bright down here. So I might actually just move this up a bit. There's maybe a bit more warmth up there but I'm pretty happy with that okay so looking at our before and after